uh, we have Mr. Francesco Fonseca. Uh, he is the Vice President at National Cybersecurity at BitSight. Uh, Mr. Fonseca co-founded Anubis Networks in 2016. Uh, prior to his initiative, he founded an IT company called Crashless, specializing in complex Microsoft-based integration services. Uh, while working for the Vodafone, he was granted prestigious award for the Microsoft Exchange Most Valuable Professional consecutively for three years in 2003, 2004, and 2005. Uh, Mr. Fonseca holds a degree in management and computer sciences from Minhu University and taught computer networks at Nova University and Moderna University. So he's a senior technical expert on cybersecurity, and today he will be sharing his shrewd insight on understanding the cybersecurity posture of critical infrastructure through a technical approach. So the forum is yours now, sir. Good, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for the invitation, uh, Mr. Siddiq. So um, my name is Francisco Fonseca, uh, as you know, um, and I'm responsible for the national cybersecurity area at BitSight. In that area, what we do is working with countries in order to help them monitoring the national critical infrastructure. We currently have 38 countries working with us. And today I'll be sharing with you what we are doing with those countries. First of all, a quick explanation about what the rating is, because this will be important. So the rating is a number we provide to any organization in the world, private, governmental, it's a number that goes from 250 to 900, where 250 means basic security posture, 900 means advanced security posture. So the higher, the better. This rating is calculated based on information that exists around the world. It's not intrusive, so we don't need to deploy any software nor any hardware on the organizations. And it's continuous, like the stock market. So every day there's a new rating and it's based on objective data. It's not based on questionnaires, perceptions I've heard. So it's objective data. The interesting part of the rating is that allows anyone to talk cybersecurity. So non-experts, you know, everyone will understand the rating. Now, how is this rating calculated? Um, the rating is calculated using information. So we use 120 different data sources. And then there's an important part, which is the mapping uh, of the organization. So, so that we can attribute events and information we see around the world to specific organizations, in this case to critical infrastructure, we need to know their um, external infrastructure. So we have you know, a significant amount of people and algorithms that will uh, try to find out what is the external networks, IP addresses, and domains that those organizations have. So nowadays we have currently more than 200,000 organizations mapped around the world. So in most of the countries, we already have some thousands of uh, organizations. And that's very important because it's when uh, we see data, we can then relate that data to bank A, electric company B, transportation company C, et cetera. This part is absolutely critical. And this is what allows us to be a, a, a ratings company. Then for each organization, we'll look 23 risk vectors. In a few moments, I'll show them. So I'm not going to talk right now in detail. And finally, the rating is calculated. So every day, a country has the capability on a daily basis to know the risk, the security uh, risk that a critical infrastructure uh, represents. Just a high level uh, view. This is an example of the information that they will be able to see. If we look into the screen, what this tells us, it, this is data from an a electric company in Brazil. So what this data tells us, and this is what is available on a daily basis, is for instance, that uh, if we see this white, uh, this blue bar here, this is where typically electric companies should be around the world. In this case, although this electric company is improving, it's still below. So in terms of risk, represents a higher risk than, than the standard in the industry. We can also those are the 23 risk vectors I mentioned a few moments ago, and we provide a grade for each risk vector. So we can tell for each critical infrastructure how they are performing on a specific vector. For instance, uh, in, as we know, email is still one of the main attack vectors. We, we will tell how the organization is performing in terms of SPF and DKIM, how they certificate, 
you know, the, the, how they manage the firewalls, open ports, et cetera. Uh, a means that, that they are on the top 10%, and F would mean they are on the bottom 20%. We also tell how they, what's their time to respond to security incidents. Um, we can say what is the norm, what we see in each industry, how, what we see on that specific organization so that they can benchmark their times to respond to incidents. And also the diligence part. So if we look at all, all the diligence part is typically related with best practices, configurations, we'll tell how that uh, critical infrastructure is performing when, when we compare with the industry so that we know that that organization is performing worse or better than what is expected on what we see around the world. Now, um, how are we working with governmental agencies in order to make this happen? We typically work at three levels strategical, sectoral, and operational. Um, I'm going to share with you some examples of what we do on the strategical and, and sectoral, because I think those are the most interesting. Um, at strategic level, and at strategic level, we are talking about the, 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 the directors or the head of the national cybersecurity centers or national certs. Some of the challenges they have is communicating uh, to, to a politician. So they, they need to communicate the cybersecurity of the, the critical infrastructure. And it's not easy as we all here in this call know to, to talk security to non-technical people. Um, they also need to talk to media, for instance, to the media uh, more and more because the media is demanding more information around this area. They need to talk sometimes with executives of the constituents, right? And one of their main responsibilities is to generate awareness among the, those persons. And also they want to benchmarking their nations and their industry. So one person uh, with this role responsibility, they want to know how the finance sector in my country is performing comparing with the other uh, finance sectors of my neighbors or a country I want to do benchmarking with. How is my country performing against uh, other countries? The, from a sectoral perspective and sectoral, I mean, in this type of organizations in general, we see sector people that someone that is responsible for the sector. So those agencies may have someone that will interact with the finance institutions, someone that will interact with the uh, energy institutions, with transportation, et cetera. And it's important that this, those persons have the capability to have uh, good conversations with the constituents. And if we can provide that information in advance, those conversations will be more productive. At least they can focus on the risk, uh, where the risk is and exists. Imagine it's like going to a doctor and before you have the first conversation, the doctor has access to your blood analysis. Then, you know, measuring the performance of those CNI, how they are performing a specific, let's say, electric company compared to the other 100 electric companies in the world that are more similar to that one in terms of size of infrastructure, amount of employees. So we can tell how they are performing comparing with companies that are exactly uh, the same or very similar, incentivizing improvement and generating awareness. Um, we, we have the capability to show how the companies are performing in a specific sector and that is used in order to incentivize improvement. It's part, if we are responsible for an organization and someone from the government tell us, look, your organization stands here, you know, from, a, a, a national, from a national perspective, you are one of the top performers or one of the worst performers. Typically what we see is that the ones that are on the bottom will work extremely hard in order to improve, right? So, and, and finally, we have this collaboration part where um, the government can collaborate with the, the critical infrastructure, providing them access to, to the platform. Now, in terms of um, the last part of my presentation, I would like to share with you some examples around how uh, those governmental agencies are measuring the security performance, the cybersecurity performance in this case of those organizations. And I'm gonna share with you some examples. I think they are interesting because again, in this area is difficult to communicate, to measure, and we try to make it in a way that um, it's, it's, we try to make it more easier. So one example is we can show the, the trends during the previous 12 months of all the critical infrastructure. In this example here, for instance, the, the, the usefulness of this uh, slide will be to tell us where, which CNIs we should be focusing. The ones probably that presents a higher risk today or the ones that have a trend to go down where the risk is increasing. 
Another example, we have the capability to say how the different critical infrastructure performed in the previous 12 months. In this example, we see that we are measuring different uh, critical infrastructure. We have the rating and then we have the delta. So we can see in the previous year, which ones performed better, which ones performed not so well. And finally, imagine the capability on a quarterly basis to see the progress or the absence of progress. In this case, we can see that this country is performing well because one year ago, uh, let's say they had 10 organizations in low risk, six in high risk. One year later, we can see that they have now 12 in low risk and three in high risk. So they were able to uh, reduce six companies in high risk into three, and that's progress. This slide is one example how in some countries they will be communicating with politicians to explain and justify the investments that are being done in a way that they will understand. We are not talking about firmware upgrades, TLS. We are talking a language that they will understand. Um, another uh, approach is comparing how the different ministries, for instance, we can, this can be done and it's done for each sector, but how the different ministries are performing comparing with the average of the ministries around the world. So we know that average of the ministries around the world is 650. We can tell which ones are performing better. So then you can, again, prioritize. And when you put those variables on a matrix where you, know, you can measure the performance in the previous 12 months, how they compare with what is expected on a specific industry, you can have probably an interesting picture about which CNIs you should be focusing and, and prioritizing. In this case, being at the top uh, right quadrant is a good place to be. It means that this organization is above the average of the sector. And last 12 months, they performed well. Being on the bottom left side means that they are not performing so well. So imagine having the capability to have this picture for each sector will probably help someone that needs to make decisions in terms of prioritizing the investments, uh, to measure the performance over time, et cetera, et cetera. And with this, I finish my presentation. So and I, I'm open for questions. Yes, Mr. Fonseca, thank you for your presentation. Uh, as you know that Pakistan is a nuclear deterrent nation. Uh, nuclear installations are always the critical infrastructure you talked about. Uh, our country have collaborated with the United States and adopted the best practices, the trainings and the personal screening uh, in, you know, in increasing its nuclear safety or the cybersecurity of its nuclear installations. So, uh, but yet uh, there has been an article in the arms control, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, highlighted that Pakistan can and should do more to provide confidence that international community to the international community that the nuclear program employs the highest level of the safety and security. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this? That what should be, you know, the roadmap or the strategy for the Pakistan to enhance its uh, safety and security of its critical infrastructure, especially the nuclear installations. Well, first of all, in general, what we see and what could be good practices are first defining in a very clear way who is the uh, organization or agency that should be responsible, because sometimes in countries it's not clear who that organization is. Sometimes there's more than one organization. The next step will be to define in a clear way what critical infrastructure is. In many countries, you see that they are still defining on the concept of defining. So although sometimes they have the sectors defined, but the organizations per se are not defined yet. So recommendation will be have a clear definition on what's critical, which sectors are critical, which depends from country to country, then be capable of clearly naming those uh, organizations. Then um, having, and of course, in this case, nuclear will be probably one of those those sectors. Uh, all the countries that have uh, nuclear uh, capacity, that's of course uh, absolutely critical. Then the next step is defining the assets. After you know who those organizations are, being capable of defining the assets. You can't imagine how challenging is, even sometimes for the company itself to have the capability to define the critical, not, not only the critical assets, but the critical assets and even all the assets that they have because what we see around the world is that sometimes 
they are just monitoring specific critical assets, but then they forget to monitor all the assets of the organization. And as we know, sometimes they can uh, compromise a specific asset and then do a lateral movement to what is critical. So I would say having the capability to define all the assets that belong to an organization and then what is critical. Uh, eventually naming or define having sectoral managers can also help. So we see countries that we see that the countries that in from my perspective are probably doing a better job are the ones that have defined sectoral managers so people that will interact with the sectors and in some cases and this is probably also aligned with your question but in some cases highly sophisticated countries can have even an account manager which is someone from the governmental agency that is sitting on the critical infrastructure if it's absolutely critical they will have someone so this tells us that probably one day if there is a crisis they'll probably be, have the capability to better coordinate the response right um, finally having um, a clear policy around how the communication and, and and what's the mandate of that agency and the cnis because in some countries we see that agencies can't do more because they don't have the mandate and the, the frontiers are not clearly established or what they can and cannot do i think that um, after defining all this at the end you need to make sure that what those governmental agencies can do when interacting with the constituents is clearly defined and they have the mandate to do what needs to be done, which is not always the case. So um, I hope this has responded to your question or at least gave some ideas. Yeah, to some extent. Uh, we also had a question from the participant. It is a short question, but uh, I'll be, you know, adding um, a one more follow-up question with it. Uh, one participant uh, asked that, uh, which country in the 21st century is leading in the cybersecurity? And my follow-up question will be that Pakistan being a latecomer in the, you know, domain of the cybersecurity and along with numerous other developing countries, uh, we are obviously following the suit of the technologically advanced countries, so uh, it's better we can have a better idea by you know having a competitive analysis of the cybersecurity strategies of those technologically advanced countries. So, uh, first question is that which which country is leading the in the in the realm of the cybersecurity, and what should be you know the the milestones which Pakistan should achieve. Uh, in order to secure its national cyberspace and its critical infrastructures. So the, the way we measure cybersecurity, and I'm going to respond probably from a different perspective. So uh, I'm not going to respond in terms of the, the national legislation and national strategy. What we can see and we measure is how the countries are performing, both from a perspective of um, the companies and the citizens. So we measure things like, which at the end I think that are relevant, things like how many infections per habitant a country has, right? Because imagine a city where you have um, uh, one uh, thief per each 100 habitants and another one where you have 10. Where are you going to have more crime and homicide at the end of the year? It's pretty obvious that it's on the one that has 10, right? And we measure at scale citizens, not citizens, so uh, residential networks and corporate networks. What we see interest from that perspective, measuring things like the infections, the certificates, the way companies manage the firewalls. So what we see, looking into the data, if you want, the response is not based on legislation, it's uh, um, uh, and, and, and training and capacity planning, the res my response will be based on the data, what the data tells, which in principle should be a consequence of you know, the, 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 the first things we've mentioned. So the, the legislations, the, the, the capacity planning, et cetera. In general, I, I will, I'll tell you that in general, Europe as a continent is the, the, the one that is performing better. Uh, and then when you look into the countries, uh, interestingly, the countries that are performing better are countries like, for instance, Germany. Uh, some Nordic countries are also performing pretty well. Um, because they, we see, looking at all those risk vectors, they are the ones that have a better performance, but looking at all the country, which means, and, and because re resident, uh, the residentials have a high impact when talking about the country because of their number, 
it means that pro in general, in those countries, they have probably a better posture when they are sitting in front of the computer. For instance, they will probably use better firewall systems. They will not do illegal activity like downloading uh, torrents, right? Uh, movies, applications, software. In general, companies will have a better posture in terms of uh, measuring those the, the, the certificates that they have. So when we measure all that, I would say that the Nordic countries and central countries of Europe in general are, are the best ones. Then in Asia, if we go into your continent, Japan is the number one. Japan is, a, um, Japan is the number one. So when we look, I, I was not prepared to share all the data in more detail, but we sometimes we, 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 we share that information. But in general, in Asia, Japan is performing pretty well. After Japan, in general, comes Korea, South Korea. Um, interestingly, the way and the approach we have and the methodology, it can happen because since we look at all the attack surface and in general, bigger countries will have a more things exposed, it may happen that in some cases, countries that are not exposed to the world or open may also represent uh, a good security posture. So interesting in our case, for instance, in Asia, North Korea also uh, would have, uh, let's say from, from that perspective, will have a, a good rating because their exposure to in the internet is very small. But th those will be the outliers. So answering your question, North of Europe, Central Europe, uh, Germany, Finland, Japan, those will be good examples at the national level. If we talk about separating, taking off the citizens and focus on, on, on companies, the story can be slightly different. So there are some countries that will have a very good performance if we look at the companies, but the citizens are not performing at, uh, at, at, at the same level. Now, in terms of, um, in terms of um, milestones for, for Pakistan to, to, to get there and improve, I'll say that first of all, I would recommend to try to do a diagnosis and understand where you are today, uh, comparing with others in different risk vectors in different areas, so that you can measure in which areas Pakistan is behind. There'll be some areas where eventually you are in front of the, for instance, the average of uh, Asia. Some other areas you will be behind. Um, from our perspective, one way looking to data could be understanding in which areas Pakistan is not performing so well, and then eventually create a program uh, uh, in order to improve. And that program can be multiple things. Sometimes it's, you know, some technical measures, sometimes can be awareness campaign. For instance, one goal that I think that should exist, and I don't see that often, is how can I reduce the amount of infections going out from the, you know, the, the, the IP addresses of my country. Also because I think many times uh, countries do not, do not have that notion. Countries typically know how many infections we had last year, how many we have this year, and they can see if the trend is going up or down. But in general, they don't, they don't have the, the, the capability to compare with others or do the same measurement with others. Because the moment you start doing that measure for the different areas, then you may have a, a good response to where you should start focusing, maybe on the areas where you are behind other countries that are similar to you. So this could be uh, an interesting way. And then to establish some milestones of improvement instead of um, specifically in some areas and then measuring it and, and doing the needed adjustments. So this could be a one, one, one possible approach.